Thank you for being here today. Okay. You don't remember that from the movie? Was that the trolley part? That was the part where they're practicing and they have to show that you don't wave like crazy. Oh, okay. You have okay, to wave yes, nice yes, like yes, a princess. Yes, right. Okay. I failed etiquette school. Well, and you failed paying attention to the princess diaries. Well, I mean, it was a lot to pay attention to. <laughs> okay. So I'm Aaron. I'm Tom. This is Baby's First Watch List. And by the grace of elec- of Hector Elizondo, I'm here today. Yes. Thank you, Hector. So, How old is he now? Like in his 80s? Uh, he's like 86, I think. Jeez. Hold on. He's 86 years old. And he was awesome. Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was like the best. Okay. So today we are discussing The Princess Diaries. So this movie is from 2001, a yes. long time ago. Yes. 22 years ago. And it is a little bit of a coming of age kind of like comedy family film. Uh, and it was directed by Gary Marshall. Do you know what Gary Marshall's known for? Pretty Woman. Yep. He did Pretty Woman. He created Happy Days. Oh, I did not know that. He was a writer for The Lucy Show and The Dick Van Dyke Show. He also developed the TV adaptation of The Odd Couple. Oh, okay. Um, he also directed... I knew that he had done a lot. I didn't realize it was all this type of stuff, though. Yep. He also directed Overboard, Beaches, Runaway Bride. Runaway Bride is the other one. And he did... Uh, valentine's day he, all those uh, days movies. he was um yeah he died in 2016 yes he's actually slightly younger than i thought i thought he was like 90 when he died he was 81 it's interesting he's it says here on wikipedia he's known for creating happy days but huh. i know him for directing pretty woman oh okay which there was a whole thing on real housewives of beverly hills tell me what you think about this anniversary idea so you know dorit <laughs> right yeah, sure. Dorit, the one the that name. got robbed? Yes. Okay. Correct. So she and PK, her husband, are having a little bit of a rough patch, but he decided he wanted Kyle Richards to take Dorit to lunch, quote unquote, right? How did but, we end up here two and a half minutes into this I'll episode? I'll tell you. <laughs> but actually, PK had set up a day for Dorit where she was going to stay for a little bit at the uh, the hotel that Pretty Woman took place in, and she had to like dress like Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman with the dress, right? And they did a whole. He was there, and they acted out like the like romantic dinner scene in Pretty Woman. A bunch of people in this movie were in Pretty Woman. How do you feel about that as an anniversary gift? No, I mean, do what you want to do. I just don't find that to be... Do what you want to do. And then he got Berlin to perform Take My Breath Away. Okay. That was not in Pretty Woman. No. <laughs> no. It was in Top Gun. In Top Gun. So I thought that was kind of weird. You didn't weird. get Kenny Loggins? No, he didn't. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was the Gary Marshall connection. Yeah, Gary Marshall... Yeah, no, that's all I got. Yeah. On I, Gary. But good for him. No, like I was saying, there was a bunch of people in this that were in pretty Woman. hector elizondo is in pretty woman yes and so is the um, guy paolo yes and so is the guy who uh he says happens all the time the waiter i had that's one of and my trivia the same line that's one of my woman. trivias yeah um so princess diaries is loosely based on a book a young adult book of the same name by meg cabot i was a big meg cabot head growing up I shout read, out all my cabot heads out there i read all of her books all of her ya books even the ones that were like I, like historical fiction. I even read those. Mm. I didn't like them, but I read them. You got it. Um, and I read all 10 of the Princess Diaries series. Yikes. I didn't love it. I liked a lot of her books, a lot uh, other books a lot more, like All American Girl and Teen Idol. Yeah. But I still read all of them. And this, I would say, is definitely loosely based. Um, so let's talk about the fact that the screenplay is written by Gina Wenkos, who does not have a Wikipedia page. Well, Less work for you. Congrats. We talked about her. This is what <laughs> I was like, wow, about. Did you know that Whitney Houston? Whitney Houston was the producer? I didn't, but she must have liked the book or known someone who liked the That's book. That's fascinating to me. Um, the cinematography was by Carl Walter Lindenlaub. So he is known for working a lot with Roland Emmerich. And he did Independence Day. Oh, nice. So we've we've uh, covered we've, him before. We've covered Lindenlaub before. Yes, we have. He's. Mad German. We're actually one of the foremost Carl Walter Lindenlaub podcasts out there. 
We've mentioned him a couple times. Yeah, at least he twice. Also, uh, he did the movie Stargate. Okay. Uh, which is another Roland Emmerich film. Um, oh, he did Rob Roy. You know, he's been around. Uh, and he's only in his 50s Big 90s, now, big 90s guy. Um, he did the yeah. Banger Sisters. Banger Sisters. Made in Manhattan. Banger Sisters. He did a Dolphin Tale. <laughs> he did uh, Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian. There's some good ones in there. There are um, some. I've never actually seen, I don't think, any of those movies except for Independence Day. Yikes. The editor was Bruce, uh, is Bruce Green. He, uh, he sounds familiar. He was uh, in the visual effects department for ah. Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope. He was the first assistant editor on uh, two of the Indiana Jones movies. And he did do Freaky Friday. He did. That's why he was familiar because yep. we just covered that. He also did Cool Runnings and a couple. He started his career by doing some later Friday the 13th movies. Oh, okay. Which is kind of fun. Um, yeah. He also did Baby Mama. Ghosts of Girlfriends Pass, and of course the classic Mr. Popper's Penguin. This is a prolific editor. I mean, these are these are big stuff. These and are big movies. He also edited the uh, pilot episode for The Mick, and seven episodes of Jane the Virgin. Wow. Yep. Uh, the music by John Debney. He is a familiar name for sure. He's a longtime collaborator with the Walt Disney Company. Oh, okay. Um, so he has three emmys he has an oscar nomination for passion of the christ hmm. um and he yeah he does like he did hocus pocus oh um, he's a nepo baby he's the pro- the son of a producer a disney oh, disney producer oh well that Louis. makes sense he did i know what you did last summer cool that's not disney but he did no. that he did inspector gadget have you ever seen inspector gadget i haven't seen the movie but i watched the cartoon a little bit when i was younger uncle tommy took me to see the movie is that interesting <laughs> Um, it doesn't surprise me actually no he seems like an, a gadget head <laughs> <laughs> uh we did the do you know, do you know what uncle tommy's favorite movie is i don't my blue heaven okay just so you know i've seen parts of that movie okay i don't remember it though um so this guy also did the music for emperor's new groove he did spy kids cats and dogs jimmy neutron boy genius snow dogs I cats mean, and dogs today would have been charlton heston's 100th birthday and he was in cats and dogs really yeah <laughs> He also did the hot chick. Who's today, sorry, this is today. We're at we're uh, recording on Saturday, so shout out November fourth for uh, Charlton Heston's hundredth birthday. Do you know that the hot chick was directed by somebody named Tom Brady? Really, from Bayonne, New Jersey. There's an NJ There's a, connection with the hot chick. There you go. Um, and he just did a. T- he's been doing the music for like a ton of movies. But to be honest with you, like it's a little surprising that it's like, yeah, he did. The Passion of the Christ, because yeah. one of his later credits is Hannah Montana, the movie. He also did the Jetsons movie. Yeah, so <laughs> it's kind of interesting there. He did Hocus Pocus as well. Yep. So this movie starred Anne Hathaway in a very early role of hers. I think it's her first movie role. Let's take a look here. I'm almost positive it's her first movie role. Her list of performances. I did no research for this. Yeah, it's yes. we're, we're throwing this more cobble in this one together, people. This, I'm just it's not it's not going great. So um yeah, the Princess Diaries was her first movie role in 2001. That's kind of awesome. She could have fooled me. To be it honest, it doesn't seem like it, right? Um, this also stars Julie Andrews, best known for what would you consider her best known for? Mary Poppins. I would consider it Sound of Music, Sound of and then Mary Poppins. Yeah. Um, Christopher Plummer would say. Sound of Music. Heck yeah, why not? Uh, she also starred in the Broadway musical My Fair Lady. Um, she was in the television musical Cinderella. Um, she actually won the Oscar for Best Actress for Mary Poppins. And then um, she Eat your won, heart out, Emily Blunt. Yeah, she won the Golden Globe for Sound of Music. Um, she also was known for the things The Globes like, were around for that long? Yeah. Um, she also was known for... Victor Victoria, that was a big one she did. And, of course, she's known for both the Shrek and Despicable Me franchises. Oh, and she also voiced Lady Whistledown in Bridgerton. Okay. And then do you remember she turned down um, the Mary Poppins new movie to have a cam- a cameo in it so she could be an Aquaman? Aquaman. Right? Yes. I thought that was kind of funny. Yes. Um, it also stars Hector Elizondo, of course, our king. Um, our god, I would say. Yes. Caroline Goodall and Mandy Moore. That's a that's a crew right there. Yeah. Mandy Moore, was she an actress or a singer first? Well, I was actually going to ask you, what do you consider Mandy Moore more of, an actress or a singer? I 
considered her a singer. Me too. And then like I realized how many movies she was in. Yeah. It's and TV, she was in Entourage too. Like she was in a bunch of TV shows too. Well, and then she was just in This Is Us for like a million years. I, at this point, she's more of an actress. But I mean, in terms of like, I like, mean, if you were growing up, like when I was growing up, up, she was a singer. She was a singer. Me, I say, I say the same. But now I would say she's an actress. But like, how many of her songs did you know? Zero. Candy. That's the only one I know. Oh yeah. That's literally it. Um, yeah, I thought that. Do you know who she was married to? No. I. She was married to Ryan Adams. Yikes. Who we do not like on this Yikes. podcast. Um, so, yeah, kind of crazy. Not so, Brian Adams. No, we like as Brian Adams. As far as Adams. I know, we're good with Brian Adams. We're good Adams. with Brian Adams. <laughs> uh, all right. So, let's see here. This movie is 115 minutes long. It was, it long. was long. It was long. It was long. I got to say. Um, when it was released in August 2001... Oh, I know. I, I thought <laughs> I, when you said 2001, I looked it up. <laughs> uh, August 3rd or 8th? August something? 3rd. Yep. Yeah. It was, uh, they called it on Wikipedia an unexpected commercial success. It grossed over $165 million worldwide on uh, just a $26 million budget, hmm. which is kind of crazy. Yeah. I guess all the, all like the extravagant stuff is really just like one scene. Yeah. So they didn't, there probably wasn't a major budget. No. Um, it did. You got to pay out Hector Elizondo, but I mean, besides but why that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, it earned mixed reviews for its plot and its themes, but Hathaway's performance, they were like, oh, she's going to be a star. I thought that she was a little bit inconsistent, but there were moments in this movie where I was like, I, there's no way you can tell that this was her first movie. Right. And the fact that it is her first yeah. movie, like yeah, yeah. you're willing to look past those inconsistent yeah. moments. Um, yeah. People were like, not sure about how well it would do be, especially because it was a G rated movie, Yeah, which is kind of like lame. Yeah. Right. Like, so people were probably like, oh, it's like a baby movie. It's kind of like a live action Disney movie. That's sort of what they were mm -hmm. going for. And the subject matter, people thought like, oh, maybe it's only like, it's too niche, but it wasn't. People want to see it. And I, uh, a lot of people say that this success is what made Hathaway like okay she's definitely they called a bankable actress um it also helped bring Julie Andrews back into the conversation um and a sequel called The Princess Diaries 2 Royal Engagement that was released in 2004 um and it did like well as well um it stars Anne Hathaway of course and Chris Pine and they have really good chemistry I actually find um, that to be a really fun sort of romantic uh, pairing. I might have a slightly unpopular opinion. I think Anne Hathaway could have chemistry with a broom. I love Anne Hathaway. She's the best. She really is wonderful. Um, so Chris Pine, I've seen act like a broom sometimes. He doesn't always have the most charisma, but I like him overall. Chris Pine, it depends. Apparently, his... When he phones it in, you can tell. Apparently, his uh, directorial debut was not oh, exactly yeah, the talk of it. the town. D didn't get great reviews. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Didn't read much good stuff about it, especially on IndieWire. Right, exactly. They, like, <laughs> literally hated it. Excoriated it. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, that is Princess Diaries, which is pretty cool. Um, All right, we'll catch you next week. <laughs> I have so much more here that on Wikipedia that I could have put into this if I did two seconds of research um but this is kind of interesting juliette lewis was offered the part of mia i have a few people who were who were uh, at least talked about wow that is like really interesting oh yeah look at all these people on this list yeah wow i actually did not have juliette lewis it, apparently she was literally offered the role yeah yeah crazy um i'll do the plot yeah do the or plot i'll do the tag start with the taglines there's only one i only saw one tagline for this movie what is it being a princess is pretty cool but so is homework she rocks, she rules, she reigns. <laughs> she doesn't rock and rule. She does none of those things. You don't see her reign at all in no. this movie. That's a dumb tagline. It's a terrible, it's a terrible tagline. Right, it's I don't completely, like that one. completely inapplicable to the movie. Yeah, that's not very good. Okay. We're going to start with the plot summary. Mia Thermopolis, played by Anne Hathaway, is an unpopular high school student living with her single mom, Helen, in San Francisco. Mia's only friends are social outcast Lily Moskovitz. I forgot to write the actress's name down. Heather Matarazzo. Not related to Galen Matarazzo. Oh, no? I looked it up. Oh, okay. Who is Dustin from uh, Stranger Things. Uh, and her older brother, Michael, played by Robert Schwartzman. 
uh, who is related, related to Jason, to Jason Schwartzman. Schwartzman. And Robert Schwartzman was also the lead singer of a band called Rooney that oh, I loved I when was I was like, in middle school. I was like, is it Noodles? What's the name? No, it's Rooney <laughs> named after. Do you know who it's named after? Uh, Mickey Rooney. Nope. The principal in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, um, which, yikes. Yeah, but, not the person, just the character. No, just the character. And I really loved that band. Like Their one album was like one of my favorites. He secretly has feelings for Mia. Mia learns from her, estr- uh, her estranged grandmother, Clarice, played by... Julie Andrews, that she is sole heir to the small European kingdom of Genovia. I believe they said it's like between France and Spain or something. Something like that, yeah. Uh, having inherited the throne from her recently deceased father, Philippe. Clarice is determined to make Mia into a refined princess so that she may one day rule the kingdom. Overwhelmed, Mia refuses until her mother convinces her to attend princess lessons with her grandmother on the condition that she need not make her decision until the Genovian Independence Day ball in three weeks. Mia receives a makeover because, of course, it's the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. And a limousine chauffeured by Joe. Yeah. Played by Hector Elizondo, <laughs> the queen's head of security and confidant and more, perhaps. Ooh. Mia's transformation causes her schoolmates to treat her differently while her increasingly hectic schedule strains her relationship with Lily. Which, who cares? Lily okay. kind of stinks. <laughs> I got some. I got to talk a little bit about Lily okay. later. Mia tells Lily the truth and swears her to secrecy. However... The public soon learns that Mia is a princess after it's sold. the secret is sold to the press by the uh, hairdresser, and the paparazzi begin to pursue her relentlessly. Although Mia embarrasses herself at her first state dinner, the queen admits that she found her endearing, and everyone found it funny. Mm-hmm. Clarice explains that although Mia's parents loved each other, they divorced amicably so that Philippe could remain in Genovia, uh, Genovia and Helen could offer Mia a normal childhood. Josh, played by Eric Von Detten, do you know who else he voiced? Or played? No, he was in that uh, that movie that was like uh, Brink. He was the villain in Recess. Oh. And he was Sid from Toy Story. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. And he was in Brink. Oh, yeah. Sure. Do you know that movie? Like a hockey movie or something? Disney Channel hockey yeah. movie. Uh, he invites Mia to attend a beach party with him. Mia accepts, neglecting Lily and canceling plans with Michael. The paparazzi ambushes ambush mia at the beach party josh get josh kisses mia to get his 15 minutes of fame and the photos appear in the newspaper causing a scandal like really it's rated g uh clarice admonishes mia and mia promises to renounce her title yeah i thought that was a little too much joe reminds clarice that uh mia is still both a teenager and her granddaughter suggesting that the queen reacted too harshly so true joe after making amends with lily mia invites both her and michael to the ball but michael declines still heartbroken he says just consider me royally flushed and i was like what you're like what does that that even mean (laughs) like i know what that term means but like why would you say that michael (laughs) after clarice apologizes to mia for scolding her she states that mia must publicly renounce the throne at the ball i guess for some reason you can't just you know file something you know have a press release um instead mia plans to run away until she discovers a touching letter from her late father and relents who's actually played by her dad in real life oh really yeah mia's car malfunctions while driving to the ball stranding her in a downpour until she is retrieved by joe of course joe 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 (laughs) when they finally arrive mia still wet from the rain accepts her role as princess of genovia with clarice Mia accompanies Clarice into the ballroom where Michael, who has accepted Mia's apology because she like sent him a pizza or something with yeah, sorry with on sorry it. Yeah, sorry in M&M's, M&M's because he likes to eat M&M's. He invites her to dance and they confess their feelings for each other. In the final scene, Mia is shown traveling to Genovia in a private plane with her pet cat, Fat Louie, and writes in her diary that she plans to relocate to Genovia with her mother, Helen. Mm-hmm. The Princess Diaries, 2001, mm-hmm. film, and yep. Finn. Um, did you know, did you know that Robert Schwartzman, a.k.a. Michael, do you know who his mom is? Uh, Jason Schwartzman's mom. Yeah. Do you know who it is? No. Talia Shire. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. She's, uh, from The Godfather. Like, she was in The, the Godfather. The Godfather and what Rocky. Else was she in? Rocky, right, right. Yep. She, was, she was, oh, Adrian. Yeah, she was the, the Adrian. Yeah. And that means, yes, of course it means... There's a Philadelphia connection. <laughs> yes, which means that's our, well, it's as close as we're going to get to a New Jersey connection. But no, it means that he's cousins with Nicolas Cage and with Sofia Coppola. Wait, so she's related to the Coppolas? Yeah. Oh. Now wow. babies abound. Yeah. And she played Connie in <laughs> The Godfather. Yeah, she movies. did. She did. She was Connie. But yeah, that means she's related she was, uh, to Nicolas. James Conn's. She was Sonny's wife, right? I love James Conn. Was that who she was? I don't know. I saw that movie once. It's like your favorite I've movie. I've seen it like 10 times. 
You're like, oh my god, that's my favorite movie. Connie Corleone. <laughs> no, no, she's the. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of a different person. She was the sister that got married at the beginning. Yes, and the, she was with the guy who who Sonny beat up in the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was what I was thinking of. Yeah, I feel you. Yes. Okay, so let me make up some questions on the fly. All right, go I for it. I have a couple. I was thinking about this the whole movie. All right. Do you think that Philippe, a.k.a. Mia's dad in the movie, kind of got off easy with the criticism of him? Well, it depends. like they were just like, yeah, your dad. He like just wanted to rule a country because I think that they said like, oh, oh, yeah, Julie Andrews. So I'm like, okay, be more critical of your son, first of all. She was like, oh, uh, he understood that the love he had for uh, the two of you, the two of you, like your mom Helen. and you. Uh, oh, I thought he was, meant couldn't compare to the love that he had for his whole country. So I thought she meant country. Mia and Fat Louie. No, Fat Louie <laughs> King, <laughs> yes. uh, her cat. No, so she's like, oh, the love that she that he had for two people. Um, imagine he still had imagine the love he could have for a whole country. It's like like the sixty people in Genovia. Mm, like, sorry, your brother was able to renounce to become a priest. Yeah. Like, we saw what Prince Harry can do. Why don't you just renounce? Well, they didn't see what Prince Harry could do in 2001, to be fair. No, that is true. But still, like, mm, don't know about that. What do you think? I think there's more to the story here. Yeah. I, I don't think we got more. the whole story. I kind of wanted more, especially because, like, the mom's very quirky. Yeah. And I'm like, what really went on? Why did she, like, how did she meet this guy? I think it, but like, I, but like, I want to see like how it, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. How did those two get together? Yeah. Philippe. Maybe that's like the next movie that I want to know, like a a prequel. You want a prequel to the Princess Diaries? Yeah, starring Helen. Yeah. And Philippe, a little cameo by Fat Louis. Well, we'll also we'll also do we'll CGI de age um, Hector Elizondo. You have to. I mean, yeah. he's eighty six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely got to de-age him. You probably should de-age Julie Andrews, too. Yeah. Although you kind of don't have no, to. No, she probably looks fine. She's fine. Um, that, I think, I would like for a a prequel. Okay. I think that's kind of interesting. I think I'm like, make it work. I don't know, Philippe. Like, I feel like there's more to this story, and I feel like you're getting off a little easy. Yeah, no, I, I, I can see that. He's, I don't know. I feel like he just got to do whatever he wanted. Yeah, exactly. And if that's the dynamic, that's the dynamic. But, like, give me a dad also right you know right she's like i never met him and i'm like okay so now we're like all cool with it yeah because he would he paid her tuition and wrote her one letter but that's like that's like classic disney though that is yeah if you think of like the animated stuff like that especially like the older like that era type of animated stuff no that's true like at least one of the parents is out of the picture always like when did little mermaid come out 89 yeah right like there uh you know lion king like all those all those if you compare it to like the other the regular Beast. disney movies yeah yeah one no, of the that's... parents is out of the picture for one reason or another true um would you want to go to genovia would i want to go there yeah. sure yeah it seems like a fun place it seems like a, a a regal place it also seems like there's probably a decent amount of income inequality in genovia <laughs> yeah um, uh genovia definitely is a formula one kind I of city. literally one of my questions was <laughs> what would be the first fun thing you did as head of genovia mine would be i would bring formula one to genovia <laughs> that is exactly what i was gonna say formula one if you don't know is in like all these like weird small places like, baku uh azerbaijan bahrain singapore M- singapore monaco like all these like small countries that are like really rich, really rich, and like like a lot of times are like not great countries, uh. But like there's like this is exactly the type of co- country that would have. They have one in the United States. Yeah, they do. Austin, in Austin, Texas. Yep. Yeah, they're in Mexico City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think they're in Brazil tomorrow. Yeah, watch Formula One. Drive to Survive on Netflix. It's so we're, good. we're gonna keep pushing it. Yeah. Um, no, so I thought like Genovia, well, I'll go see a Formula One race. Absolutely. hundred percent. You'll see a Formula One race here. <laughs> That's really funny. You could see, uh, you know, Max Verstappen win again. Charles Leclerc. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Like one of them has some witch, rich aunt that like lived in Genovia yes. for a summer. Yes. Um, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> How does this compare to other kind of teenish movies of the time? It doesn't. Why? Because it's G rated. Yeah. Because it's a princess story at its heart. Mm -hmm. Different kind a little bit. There's a little bit of a twist on it, but more or less it is. And that's not what you really get from like the Lohan movies and, you know, certain types of movies like that where they're more, those movies tend to focus on, 
I think issues that are a little bit more down to earth, uh, a little bit more. Not that the issues here aren't, because again, I'm going to talk about it later about how much this movie is about like self actualization, which apparently is a thing in the book. It is, um, and like finding yourself. So like, sort of, they're like metaphorically, it's there, but Freaky Friday is about a mom and a daughter. It's about stepping into your, you know, mom or or your or your daughters or whatever your parent, your child, whoever, somebody else's shoes. It's the old uh, To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, Mm -hmm. What am I thinking of? Mean Girls is about fitting in in a new place and sort of of finding who you are, but finding who you are on a much smaller scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like those types of movies, those are just a couple of the two that popped in my head. Um, I feel like they're a little bit more down to earth than this one, and I don't think this one really fits with them in that way. I think this one fits more with... Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, like those Disney Disney fied productions. Mm-hmm. Which, it did remind me a little bit about like a, what a Disney Channel movie would be. Okay. Yeah. Um, just up the notch. I was gonna say with like prestige actors, actors. <laughs> yeah. Well, who's your favorite character in this? Movie? Joe is the best character in this movie. It's not particularly close. Why? He's just got everything. Like he's <laughs> he's always there. He's the sage, you know. Like, mm-hmm. and he's just he's always right. Which is kind of annoying when I fought in, in those characters, but the way that he carries himself is just so like confident and like he's the father figure, right? You know that That's that key. she's been missing her whole life, exactly. Um, and he slides right into that role perfectly. And I like that when it comes to which is apparently a change from the book that the adults aren't the problem, like because right. apparently Clarice is is like she hard on mean. her and mean. Yeah. I like about this movie that they're not the problem. Mm-hmm. Cuz that that would be easy, you know? Yes. What makes it harder is sort of like it's kind of going against what I just said, but the mundane issues are the problem in this movie. Mm-hmm. The 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 boy she likes and the uh the 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 popular girl, it's the bully. Like that kind of stuff sort of that's where the conflict arises and the paparazzi, which is and having to maintain friendships and Right. Right. Um. So yeah, no, I think Joe is my favorite. Um, Me too. Yeah, he's your favorite. Oh yeah, by far. He's just so cool, and he wears black, and he, um, he's like, uh, giving Clarice that second chance, that romance. Yeah. And well, there's a thing there. Apparently, like her husband had died like shortly yeah. before, but like yeah, but like in this, that's why she's always been wearing black. Right, and yeah. he said. Maybe it's time that you stop wearing black. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Joe. Yeah. And oh they dance. Oh, gosh. And then they dance. And I was like, oh, Joe. <laughs> and then, yeah, he's nice to Mia. And he's, he's very nice to her, too. Like, he's just a kind man. He's kind and he is aware. Mm-hmm, he, exactly. He, he reads people well. Yeah. Exactly. I love Joe. All right. So besides Joe, what's your favorite thing about this movie? And what's your least favorite thing? Okay, my favorite thing about this movie, it's honestly it's Anne Hathaway. It's it's kind of a cop out, but she's you can tell from from jump that she's a superstar. Yeah. Uh I did not like a few things about this movie. Overall, I'm going to say I did not love this movie. I didn't hate it either. It was there. You said it was a movie. I said it was certainly a movie. One thing I didn't like about it was that it was way too long. This movie should have been 80 to 90 minutes. Yeah, it was too long. There's too much going on. I said, like, when they were doing all the etiquette classes, I was like, this could have been a five-minute montage instead of a 25-minute sequence. <laughs> like, right, right. like that stuff, that's the kind of stuff that I think they could have probably used a et- better editor for. I'm sorry, my guy. But, uh, yeah. Didn't like that. Didn't like the makeover. I thought the makeover How was... about Paolo? Hmm? With Gretchen and Helga and Paolo. Could have just gotten rid of that whole thing. Apparently, it's Clarice who leaks to the media in the book yeah yeah. clarice is like bad i wouldn't have wanted that in the movie Mm -hmm. i'm glad that they had a different character do it i vaguely remember that clarice like has tattooed um tattooed eyeliner i think wow and like she's very harsh looking and she acts that way too in the miss havisham vibes yeah it's like (laughs) intense um i didn't like that uh, the length. I well, the thing about the makeover that I didn't like was that they didn't have to make her look like Hermione Granger in in the beginning. <laughs> yes. Like you don't have to make her ugly, or what they perceive in the movie to be. It's Anne Hathaway. Like she, you know. Yeah. She's not ugly. Right. She's not. You know. But, and then they do the makeover, 
and she's supposed to be 15 years old. And she looks like 25. I could see her looking like a schlubby 15 when she before the makeover. After the makeover, she literally looks like she's 25. I think she's like 18 or 19, uh, yeah. like when she was filming. But she literally, she could, she could probably get a drink without getting ID'd. Like, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I didn't like those are the two things I didn't like. Yeah. What did I like about this movie? First of all, I like the concept. I think it's fun. It's a cool concept. I think it is completely unrealistic. It's what all girls dream of. And yeah. It's like, I, well, it's actually kind of, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But I liked I like the concept of it. I think it's fun. I like the whole etiquette learning how to be a princess when you're a normal, you know, 21st century teenage girl. I, I think that it's fun to kind of take that kind of royal thing and, and bring it down to high school. Like, I think that's really, really cool. Um, well, and then you had Mandy Moore's character as high school royalty. Yes, definitely. I also <laughs> like that. Um, April just bumped her head on the yeah, microphone. Sorry, Abe. I also like that it's a rated G movie. Yeah. I think that that's cool to have uh, movies that sort of could like that movie could have been PG or PG 13 even, uh, but they kept it really, you know, really clean for the kiddos and i think that there's a place for that yeah um i also think the casting of julie andrews is genius and i do i think it could have been five different people oh i love her it could have been the whole group of helen mirren and it could have there there's so many no it's julie andrews it could have been maggie smith it could have been it could have been any of them it's julie andrews it could have been any of them um and i also think that although clarice is very nice there's still elements to her that you could tell she's been hardened by her royal duties and i like that or that she's just in general she's got that dog in her yeah i yeah (laughs) exactly and i i think that's really interesting um as far as things that i didn't like i mean yeah there's just too many characters there oh that too there's so many like there doesn't need to be three bully girls there like you didn't need the three bully girls and the bully guy and the bully guy you didn't need for and uh, Anne Hathaway's mom to be dating the English teacher. You don't need Paolo at all. You don't need Paolo's assistance. <laughs> you don't need like there's like all these different characters that it's like, why do we need the principal, the gym teacher, the English <laughs> teacher and the music? teacher? Well, I turned to you and I was like, I get that it's based on a book, but there's so many. And you were like, these characters aren't, aren't like, in the book. Yeah. Like, this is totally made up. Yeah. A lot of these characters are literally made up for like one liners. Like at one point, Mia, when she gets her makeover and then she goes to school and like they're like, oh, my God, is that a wig? Like all these bullies being mean to her. One random girl goes, I think it looks really sweet, Mia. Who are you? Why did you need to have <laughs> why lines? Why are you a character? I'm like, why did you need to have lines? Why was Jeremiah in this? Who's Jeremiah? He was like, oh, the that other like hair. random guy. Why was he in this movie? He had like three scenes. Yeah. Why does he have three scenes in this movie? I don't know. What Who was we... the owner of the garage? Oh, Doc? With the San Francisco 49ers yeah, hat. Doc. He was in like two scenes. Yeah, also. Yeah. Like, why? who are these people? Why did we need to know about the prime minister's daughter <laughs> who she comes and she's like, I'm not allowed to come to dinner. Okay. okay. I don't know you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> We've never met. Like, I don't, like, why do we need to know about the person that Mia works with at the rock climbing place <laughs> when there's literally half a scene at the rock climbing place? The, the, I, like, what about the... Is this the director's cut? Like, does she <laughs> need to, do we need to have the guy that does the trolley and the cop and then they're back and they're at the gala later? But then they all, they also both get knighted. Yeah. <laughs> Fake knighted. <laughs> like, that is so... Like, unnecessary. Did we need an entire scene of Lily and Mia playing basketball? <laughs> right. Honestly, yes. I mean, but yeah. You missed it because you were letting April out, but that's the scene where Anne Hathaway falls onto the bleachers, and it's like a like she messed up, and then she says, no, keep going, keep going, oh, and they yeah. kept it in the scene. That was pretty uh, funny. Yeah. Do you need Robert Schwartzman's whole band <sighs> to perform, like, a quarter of a song? <laughs> they uh, like, The editing... Do you need Mandy Moore singing Stupid Cupid? Ma- maybe. She was a singer. Maybe. Maybe you do. But it's like, okay, all of this is so... Do you do you need 75 different reporters? <laughs> oh, yeah. There's like four. Yeah. And they're all like talking to each other and they all have like five lines. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> we need some serious cutting Like if you're going to do it, just cut it to like in Scream where like there's one reporter. Right. Exactly. But like there's a bunch of reporters, but like you focus on the one. Right. 
No, they didn't do that. No, they're just there's just ten random like, reporters. Hold on, you're reporter seven. You need to really nail yes. these lines. Yeah, you're from ABC. You're from NBC. You've got twenty five lines. It's really important. You're that from you Telemundo. Them. Like this is what we're. What? It's like the it's like Anchorman. <laughs> so that is probably the the thing I was like. Well, that, that that goes hand in hand with the length. I think if you yeah. cut a lot of the characters and like the the nonsense, you cut out a lot of the time. Also, something that is in this movie that I find in. Gary Marshall's movies overall, which it's definitely a thing from like sitcom, whatever. And I see it a lot in some of the movies from the 2000s that we've watched that I'm like, I'm rewatching them. Like Miss Congeniality was like this, where like there'll be these weird throwaway lines that someone kind of like eh, from off screen. You know like, what that is? Like someone going like, I wish I was a princess. And it's like, who? Like, we don't need those off lines. Those are those are added in post. I hate them. Like those aren't in the script. I would literally the video that I was watching that I'm going to talk about later. The guy that was the filmmaker in it was like, those are like when you can't think of a joke and then you think of it later and you just have somebody record it and you throw it in the movie. The one that I remember that I was just like, this is so unnecessary. It's like after Mia like get, runs off and like people are trying to like, oh, I want to talk to the the press. Someone goes, my dad thinks I'm a princess. Okay. Like, who are you? <laughs> so yeah, that's probably my least favorite thing too. Is those lo- added in post lines <laughs> that are just coming from off screen? I'm like, okay. Yeah. So what would be your reaction if you found out that you were like the princess or the ruler or whatever of a new country? I'd be like. Finally, someone figured it out. Somebody appreciates me. <laughs> I would be like, all right. Like, I'd be down. You'd be down? Would you You would go through the etiquette lessons? Yeah, sure. You would do all that stuff? Yeah. Do you think that... Oh, so this is kind of like how when you did piano lessons for like nine years because... And you I just can't wouldn't say stop. no. Yeah. Be, like, you, your parents were like, we don't really care if you... Can. You were like, no, no, I have to keep going. Yeah, I was terrible. I would never practice and I'd be so miserable and so terrified every year at my recital and it was awful. So this country would be in, in trouble. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're already in trouble. <laughs> they can't find a ruler. Well, it's, well it's just going to be like the corrupt oil baron or whatever it was in this movie, right? I Those mean... other two characters. Oh, yeah. And more characters. Like, why? Um... Yeah, I mean, I would do it anyway, and I'd be pretty good at it. I think I'd be a great queen. You you have empathy. You would be fine. Exactly. What is... We already talked about the first fun thing you would do. That was going to be my follow-up. Yes, I would I would make a Formula One track. Absolutely. Isn't the... Ugly... And, and a water park. <laughs> okay, a water park and a Formula One separate or <laughs> like same... Uh, Maybe on this... This is what I would do. In the do. same complex. Ready? If I was the leader of Genovia, I would create a big tourism complex. Inside, you have, number one, you've got a water park, all right? Gross. Water parks are gross, but okay. No, it's fresh Genovian spring water. Ah, all right. So it's beautiful. Distilled. Number two, there would be a pear festival grounds that would have genovian pears far and wide including, they grow year round um yep and <laughs> <laughs> and it would include our famous pears and cheese dessert that they talk about in the movie mm-hmm. um and then it would also have like a really cool arcade and then it's all surrounded by like this wild formula one track that like every year people are so mad to go to this one yeah because it's just like the water park is so loud. Yeah, the water park's in the middle of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. It's a whole ordeal. That's what I would do. Yeah, and it would probably Christian Horner's like, oh, I hate this track. It's always the worst one for Red Team Red Bull. But exactly, <laughs> and then it would be like, okay, this is the best place on earth. Yeah, the tourism would skyrocket. Yeah, without a doubt, that's what they need. They need an influx of capital there. And we've got Air Genovia, so everyone can get there. Yeah, is that just? Is that just the Queen's private jet? Like, what, what is that? Well, who knows? Uh, what's the best Anne Hathaway role? I mean, it's got to be, without a doubt, Rachel Rachel getting married. Yes, I agree. That was the one that I watched where I was like, dang. Dang, dude, she good. 
<laughs> yeah. So she's got a bunch. She's got Brokeback Mountain, which was her, like, I think, the one that brought her into, like, the dramatic roles. Great movie. Uh, She didn't get a whole lot to do in that movie, but I think that was, like, sort Michelle of Michelle Williams got more to do than she yeah. did. And Michelle Williams didn't get that much. Which exactly. Is, which is a running thing. Yes. But also, that's, I think, fair in the context in of the movie. In the context of the movie. Yeah. But I just mean that Michelle Williams tends to take these roles where there's, like... Like, why aren't we doing more with Michelle Williams? It's like, okay, Michelle Williams, we're going to give you the Oscar nomination. Don't worry. But, like, you need to be in more substantial roles like Blue Valentine. Yes. Where you're amazing. Yeah. And she was amazing. Well, she's great in every role. She's just... Okay. Except did not love her in the Fablemans. Okay, that's fair. But I love her in everything else, including the tiny clips of her doing... Um, I've heard of her doing Britney Spears' audiobook. She was good in Shutter Island. She was good in Shutter Island. Now, that's Michelle Williams. She was Williams. good in... I uh, the the one with Casey Affleck too. Manchester by the Sea. Yep. Did you see that? Yep. Oh. Um Kyle Chandler, Lucas baby. Hedges. <laughs> <laughs> she was in Anne Hathaway. This is back to Anne Hathaway. She was in Oh, she was Catwoman in Dark Knight yeah, Rises. Dark Knight that Rises. was kind of fun. Uh Les Mis. Which yeah. was about the time Dark Knight Rises and Les Mis, I think was the time when people started to like half a hate. Yeah. Stop half a hating. Yeah. And I'm talking to you, Chris Storacy. <laughs> Uh, she was pretty good in Interstellar. She was like one of the people in the ship with McConaughey. I don't really do Interstellar, but that's fine. Um, she's done some 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 pretty good stuff. She was oh she was also in Armageddon Time, which was the movie last year that was uh, with Jeremy Strong. Okay. When they became good friends, I remember that. It was a it was a little moment during the Succession stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think it's Rachel getting married. So basically, Rachel getting married is a movie about uh, she plays a. Uh, a, a girl in rehab and Kim, her, Kim K Y M, yeah. horrible. Uh, and she's coming home for coming home from rehab for her sister Rachel's wedding, which is like in her family's backyard. Yes, and it is. It's very the family aspect of it is very real. Mm. Uh, and she's great. And there's a something that happened to the brother that like you don't really know, and then you find out later. Um, but she is amazing in that movie. And so I love the guy who played the dad too. I forget who it was. Just a great movie overall. I don't remember. I don't even remember what happened to the brother. I don't remember it overall. It was, but um, it was directed by Jonathan Dem. Yeah. Who's a great who's director. Who's done a ton of stuff. He did Silence of the Lambs, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he did a lot of stuff, but yeah, that one, if you are not in an, an uh, not an Anne Hathaway fan. Wow. That's a hard phrase. Uh, or if you are. You should watch Rachel Getting Married. I'm pretty sure it's short. Uh, that's the one that made me be like, wow. She's amazing. Yeah. Like, she has the it factor, without a doubt. She was also in Bride Wars. Well, that's another one. And Ella Enchanted. Yeah. That was that was sort of like that era before mm-hmm. Brokeback Mountain. Yep. Um, yeah. So, Anne Hathaway rules. And sorry about it if you disagree. Uh, anyway. So, we're doing this for Comfort Foods Month. Yeah. Which are... we're looking at some movies that either have memorable food scenes or are about food, Mm -hmm. you know, top to bottom. This one is one of the ones that has a few memorable food scenes. What is your favorite food scene in this movie? I like when um, she eats too much of the palate cleanser food. And she gets like a brain freeze. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I like that one. And then, of course, when Julie Andrews is like, I like corn dogs. (laughs) (laughs) And then when she slams the ice cream in Lana's uniform and yes. they go, Lana got coned, Lana, Lana got, got coned. <laughs> and then when she sends the pizza and it's got the sari and the M&Ms. Yeah. Um, all of those are good. I like- And then when they talk about the Genovian pears, I like that. I like the state dinner, like the whole thing. Yeah. Like when she... The guy trips it. over her. And then she sets the guy's arm on fire. She sets the guy's arm on fire. Somebody gets like their face in the soup or something like yeah. that. It's just a funny like slapstick little scene. Yeah. Uh, and sort of doesn't lighten the mood, but it like helps tight because the mood's never not light, but it helps sort of untighten Clarice a little bit yeah, exactly. in the aftermath. Uh, so yeah, no, I, I think that's my favorite one. It's ridiculous. It kind of comes out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, however, the, everything just sort of collapses. It's a good scene. And it's everyone's worst nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite. I think that's all I got for questions. Oh, the only other thing we should talk about is the significant other that we always talk about in these, like, sort of types of movies. Yeah. Usually rom-coms. This isn't really that. But um, 
What'd you think of what's his name, Michael? Yeah. In this movie. So Michael, what I okay, listen. We're not counting Josh. No, Josh. He doesn't, doesn't count. count. So Michael, I do appreciate Michael's role more than I would in some other like the that like random generic person, significant other in other movies. And this is why. The Aaron Samuels. Yeah. Um, so oh, no, I liked Aaron Samuels. Um, so this is why. So number one, he's a little bit different, right? He's got, he's a little shy and awkward and I like that. I think that that's an interesting kind of take to it. Um, I also like that he, they make it very clear that he liked Mia before all of the princess or whatever. And like, since the beginning of the movie, he like, there were little hints and stuff that he did like her. Um, it wasn't really a hint. He told the, the garage guy. No, he didn't. Yes, he he did. insinuated, but he didn't tell Doc. Um, and then I also like, um, I like the brother aspect. It's like Lily's brother, whatever. I also like, they make him nicer in the movie In the books. He's kind of like mean and yucky. And a lot older. And I just don't like him in the books at all. He's like a jerk. Um, and he is kind of nicer in um, in the movie. I think that it's lame. I think the whole thing. Like, I feel like there's just no movie where they're not lame. He's lame in this. Yeah. He's lame. He's a little lame. Yeah. We need some personality. Just, you know, spruce it up a little. Jazz it up a little bit. I know. And I feel like we still haven't found... Like, Jake and Freaky Friday was a no. Yeah. Like, Even Chad Michael his... Murray and Cinderella Story is going to be a no. What's his name in uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, too? Is a m- Eon. Yeah. Eon. He's a no. He's a, he's a, well, they're not he's a, fine. He's they're not nice. a no. They're nice. He's just whatever. Yeah. I need a Harry. Yeah. And, like, when Harry met Sally. Yeah, he's also a, he's a no, but for a different reason. Yeah, he's, but he's not just in obnoxious. the movie. He's a great movie character. Right, right. I want... I want significant others in like teen movies that are well written, w- real well characters, acted. like yeah. interesting characters. No disrespect to my guy Robert Schwartzman, but I'm excited. No, I loved him. I, Rooney was my favorite band when I was in middle school. So I am interested. I want you to watch She's the Man. Okay. To see if you like Channing Tatum in that movie. Okay. Because he's the significant other in that movie. Okay. Yeah, that's all my questions. I'm going to go. I have a couple notes. One of them is just Lily gets buckets in this movie. <laughs> when I rewatched the scene when she's arguing with her on the yeah. on the balcony. She hits like four shots. Yeah, she's good. Apparently, that was like not edited. Like she she was just she's happened. Just to, she, she happened to just go Steph Curry for those five minutes. That's kind of awesome. And then she's like dribbling the ball and she's like like her shoulders are going up and it's like <laughs> it looks awful. But like she's cashing 18 footers. I love that. And like Anne Hathaway will like launch it and just bounces off the rim. But no, Lily is Lily is going after getting after it here. <laughs> Which is funny because like she's definitely that type of like kid that would be like anti sports. I, I would never play basketball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Um yeah. Also, remember when Clarice and <laughs> Mia are talking on the couch about uh how Mia will be a great princess and she like kind of turns it down. But it's all from Fat Louie's point of view. Yeah, I loved it. What is going on there? <laughs> what is that choice? Like, you see them sitting on the couch. It pans over to Fat Louie on the stairs looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> and then it just turns around where you're looking down at them from the stairs. Like you're Fat Louie. <laughs> like you're Fat Louie. That's a real existentialist point of view it's, and perspective. It's so... Like, it made me wonder, like, did, what, did this happen earlier in the movie? Like, or is that just the one scene where you just start your Fat Louie's just taking it all in? <laughs> it's just all, like, that's, like, the surprise little, like, Schindler's List twist is that, like, this is all from... You are Fat Louie. <laughs> you are Fat Louie. <laughs> and you're traveling with them in the plane at the end? Yeah. You are Fat Louie. You are that Fat is Louis. the That is the, like, little twist at the end of that, Princess That's Dice. the end of Memento. <laughs> <laughs> we were Fat Louie all Guy this Pierce time. Guy Pierce was Fat Louie the entire time. <laughs> we were Fat Louie the whole time. Uh, yeah, those are my notes. <laughs> Lily gets buckets and Fat Louie's point of view. Yeah, that was iconic. I remember turning to you. I'm like, we're literally looking through Fat Louie's eyes right yes, now. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Tom's top five trivia. Mia's cat, Fat Louie. Yeah. Was Anne Hathaway's pet in real life. Aw. Multiple different cats played the role. I saw four. I saw two. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, One 
one of them apparently only allowed people to carry it, or one would sit still, one would jump, and there was also the last one who sits on the envelope at the end of the movie. That was a different cat from from the others. <laughs> okay. But uh, Fat Louie's so important in this movie. He is. I mean, they have to get a billion different cats for him. They got a whole litter of Fat Louis. Uh, number two, one of the waiters in the dinner scene when we referenced this earlier. When Mia breaks the water glass, says it happens all the time. The same actor played a waiter in Gary Marshall's other movie, uh, one of his other movies, Pretty Woman, and said the same line when Vivian Ward, played by Julia Roberts, flings a snail and the waiter catches it. He says, happens all the time. Number three, Hector Elizondo played basketball for several hours solo in the rain for the few seconds that was shown of him playing basketball in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> He was really good at sports. I forget which, um, I think baseball, he was oh, wow. recruited. He almost got drafted. That was like, well, him doing that is like in Twilight when, uh, what was it? Uh, Kellen Lutz and the other, uh, the one who played Alice mm -hmm. or whoever it was, was like practicing throwing lefty. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, why? Who cares? Well, you don't think those Twilight fans no, I know. would be like rabid? I know. I know. Number three. This movie, I guess number four, I have six. This movie was filmed on stage two in Walt Disney Studios in Burbank, California, which is the same stage on which Mary Poppins was shot. Cute. The stage has since been named in honor of Dame Julie Andrews, who starred in both movies. The rental house in which Andrews lived while filming Mary Poppins. Uh, Gary Marshall lived there while filming this movie. Aw. Yeah. Number five. This is what we also referenced before. For the first act, Queen uh, Clarice wears only black and dark outfits. Right before her dance with Joe, he says, you've been wearing black too long. After the dance scene, Clarice starts to add more color to her wardrobe. It is later revealed that in the movie, or in the movie that her husband, King Rupert, had passed away the previous year. That means that at the start of the movie, she was still mourning his death. But as she falls in love with Joe, her personality once again becomes alive and colorful. Yep. And finally, a bonus trivia. This is a real good one. You ready? Yeah. The rooftop where Mia argues with Lily... Again, we're back on the rooftop. Is featured both in the Pursuit of Happiness. Okay. And it's across the street from the Oh High Mark rooftop from the room. That's it. There's nothing better than that. <laughs> Which is also not actually where they filmed that scene in the room because it was a green screen. But <laughs> the, the rooftop that it was supposed to be <laughs> is across the street from this rooftop in this movie. It's cinema royalty right there. Yes. It's another one of our San Francisco movies. Yep. Uh, with Vertigo, The Room. <laughs> And now Princess Diaries. Princess Diaries. And apparently in Pursuit of Happiness, which I have not seen. I saw it. Uh, no, did I? I don't remember. I don't think I ended up seeing it. I think it was like, this movie's going to be sad. Yeah. Casting. Um, Helen Mirren was considered, of course, for Clarice because, duh. Mm -hmm. I also was thinking like Emma Thompson. Uh, but Too young. Yeah, true, I guess. Mia, you mentioned Juliette Lewis was offered the part. Um, Alyssa Milano said she was offered the part. But she's like 10 years older than... Yeah, that, she was like in the 80s she was like a kid she said she turned it down because it was like sort of like like not a role that she wanted to do anymore it's like okay go back to charmed yeah uh other people who auditioned were scarlett johansson amanda Bynes, emmy rossum and january jones those all make sense to me yeah they were all young at the time uh also Anne hathaway apparently um what did she i just saw that she um auditioned for something and i was like wow Oh, uh, What Women Want, she auditioned for, because it was a Nancy Myers movie. Yeah. Um, just Probably a, The Daughter. Yeah. I was like, that's... Helen that, Hunt's Daughter. That, that would have been her first movie. Well, that's a well-known movie. Yeah, well, it's just Mel Gibson. But, um, yeah, so that's my trivia. What else? Roger Ebert. He didn't like it. Didn't. <laughs> it's Not on his fan. most hated list. <laughs> Uh-oh. 1.5 stars out of four. <laughs> I like this movie. I, I would give it probably two. I think I gave it a five I'd or a, a, a two and a half on Letterboxd. Wow, that's really harsh. I would give it a four out of five. I, I started normalizing lower ratings. Oh, okay. Uh, it didn't It didn't do anything for me. I mean, it's got Anne Hathaway, but I... What I'll about just, Joe? He's good. I'll just watch Anne Hathaway and something else. Yeah, but what about Hector? <laughs> There's plenty of stuff to watch him in. Uh, okay. So he said... I have three little excerpts here, and my guy, my guy went into it. Okay. Um... Where did it go? Okay. He starts by saying, this is first sentence. Haven't I seen this movie before? Oh, no. The Princess Diaries is a march through the swamp of recycled ugly duckling stories with occasional pauses in the marsh of sitcom cliches and the bog of idiot plots. You recall the idiot plot. 
That's the plot that would be solved in an instant if anyone on the screen said what was obvious to the audience. A movie like this isn't entertainment. <laughs> it's more like a party game where you lose if you say the secret word. He later says, The prince has come to an unlikely end, and now his mother comes to recruit Mia to take up her royal duties. Uh, the mother is Queen Clarice, played by Julie Andrews as a nice woman with very, very, very good manners. The suspense involves, will Mia accept the throne, and will she choose as her boyfriend the snobbish jerk Josh or the nice Michael, the older brother of her best friend Lily? And, for that matter, is there any possibility that Josh will dump a glamorous cheerleader after he sees how Mia looks once she takes off her glasses and does something with her hair? Anybody, anyone who doesn't immediately know the answers to these questions either lives in a cave or wrote this screenplay. Oh my god. <laughs> he ends by saying, as the Princess Diaries creeps from one painfully obvious plot destination to another, we wait impatiently for the characters on screen to arrive at what has long been clear to the audience. If the movie is determined to be this dim-witted, couldn't it at least move a bit more quickly? Mm, I agree with that. The metronome is set too slow as if everyone is acting and thinking in half time. <laughs> that may be the most brutal... <laughs> brutal ebert review i've read of a movie that is like not hated yeah generally yeah you know <laughs> hey listen even when he's wrong he's right even when he's wrong that's an amazing yeah that's i love i love the the, the detail he's great i love the 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 swamp analogy in the beginning do you like the name roger no okay sorry any rogers listening it's not personal um and then all i have left is my little deep dive which i watched a video called psychology of a hero and it's about mia it's by a, I guess they're a podcast or at least a YouTube account called Cinema Therapy. And it's two friends and one is a licensed therapist and one is a filmmaker. And they sort of break down characters on what makes their journey effective and human. They throw in jokes, they banter. It sounds, that sounds like, you know, sort of analytical, but they're really, they're accessible and all that. Uh, they're much larger than we are. They have like over a million followers. So they don't need our help, but <laughs> just wanted to shout them out. So the video... It's how the whole movie's, you know, Mia's journey is about self-actualization. She's afraid of being in the limelight. She wants to be invisible. She has no ambitions. She just wants to kind of coast along unnoticed. And now she has people saying what they want her to be. Mm -hmm. She gets swept up in the tabloid frenzy and other stuff. And she sort of makes choices that aren't really her. Uh, she can't self-actualize until she takes a hard look at who she is and doesn't let fear dictate. Until then, she does allow fear to dictate. She has a fear of letting down her friends, her grandmother, the Genovians, all of it. Uh, and when she goes cert, uh, after something for herself, Josh turns out to be not a good guy. And Lily, not a great friend, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so in the video, they went over the four steps of self-actualization. Mm -hmm. Number one, accountability. And that is when, after everything happens with the um, paparazzi and all that, and Mia goes to Lily and they talk again on the rooftop playing basketball. Uh, and she apologizes to Lily and she apologizes to Michael via the pizza. That is sort of her recognizing the fact that she was not being a very good, a good friend. After that, number two, step two is accept influence. She learns from Lily that she now has a lot of influence to help people. Like, Lily basically says, like, you're a teenager. What other teenager has the ability to help as many people as you can? That's like a miracle, I think she says. Uh, this is great, even though it takes doing things that you don't want to do, which is part of the self-actualization of finding yourself. Number three, face your fear. And they say that even once Mia decides that she kind of wants to do the job, she still doubts herself. Mm -hmm. And she still has to you know, find something that's going to push her over and allow her to sort of step up. And that was when she read the letter from her dad and that got her to stop running, like literally stop running away, not even stop running from her, her fears uh, and try to make her way over to the ball. And then number four, voice your choice. Mia does this when she decides to take the throne at the ball um, and become Amelia Mignonette Thermopolis Rinaldi. That is uh, French, Greek, Italian. <laughs> uh, her doing that speech in a sopping wet hoodie makes it a personal choice. That's like, I guess, the symbol of the of it not being in a dress or whatever. Like she, she's just being herself. And even though she accepted the help from Clarice, Lily, Joe, all the, you know, everybody, uh, her voice is entirely her own in that moment. And that mm -hmm. is how you go from a sort of identity crisis all the way through, you know, making clear that you're doing what you want to do and you're facing your fears. And I thought that that 
analysis was really interesting from a psychological perspective and how like all it hits all those notes throughout the movie and i thought that it was a really well done video it was like 20 minutes long that's also something that's in the books that they don't transfer to the movie mia is extremely concerned about becoming self actualized yeah. actual actualized and so that's um that's something that she brings up a lot like she does a lot of self exploration and uh much more into the psychology realm yeah. in the books than she does the movie so it's obviously clearly intentional yes that, like all that stuff for in, sure in that roadmap even mm-hmm. yeah that's cool yeah uh i think that's all i got i think that's the princess diaries um yeah i am done you have anything else Nope. Does the Princess Diaries make baby's first watch list? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean it's it's yeah. it's long. It's 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 a little a little mundane, but <laughs> sure, why not? Good. Uh any takeaways? My takeaway is um mm, I forget. My takeaway is to make sure that, you know, you're trying to keep keep What's the word? What's the Rucker's thing? Keep chopping. Just keep at it. Keep trying Never to be yourself. Keep trying to be yourself. Okay. You know? Yeah. No matter what it takes, no matter who's in front of you, no matter who's trying to make you do things that you don't want to do, don't be afraid and be yourself. And then my other one is re- always keep in mind who is really there for you. Yeah. Um, Instead of trying like to... Like Joe. Yeah. Instead of trying to impress people that don't have your best interest at heart. Like Josh. Like Josh. Yeah. We're down with Josh. Like, down with Josh. Not we're down with Josh. Uh, Yeah, so that was The Princess Diaries. Hope you enjoyed listening. Next week, if you haven't seen on Instagram, uh, like I said, we're doing Comfort Foods Month. We're doing food movies. Uh, For the remainder of the month, next week we're going to be doing Tampopo, which is a, I probably pronounced that wrong, 1985 uh, movie. And the synopsis on IMDb says this. A truck driver stops at a small family-run noodle shop and decides to help its fledgling business. The story is intertwined with various vignettes about the relationship of love and food. And it's a comedy. Uh, it's pretty lighthearted. It's got, I think it's got a hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Like it's like a really beloved food movie. I've never seen it. Uh, we've never seen it. So that's what we're going to be doing next week. After that, we're going to be doing the parent trap, which is more of a memorable food scene movie. And that's going to be Aaron's yep. birthday episode. Wow. Uh, Happy birthday. And Thanksgiving episode. Yep. And to end the month, we're going to do Ratatouille because that's like the obvious choice yeah. and it's going to be fun. And we haven't done a Pixar movie in quite a while. No, it's been a minute. Or an animated movie in quite a while, I yeah. feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's going to be the rest of the month. Next week, we will see you for Tempopo. And thanks for listening. Goodbye. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>